Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. So initially we have uh, like you know very uh, detailed ones. Okay, for uh, the core Java concepts. Okay. So if you feel if you feel you don't you don't uh, require that much detail let me know okay so we can skip the topic and we can go further okay with another okay so but you know i'm starting from java training like you know how why we need to use java where we need to use java and you know how your programs get compiled and everything you know those things i'm gonna cover first okay and then you know we can uh, uh we'll go to the topics okay oops and all all other concepts okay yeah okay so the first one is java training uh like why yeah so where exactly this programming language are getting used right you know uh so generally uh whatever computer wants to do uh it it requires uh, like you know some kind of instructions okay uh, how to perform how to perform this task okay so so that kind of instructions is only possible you know using a programming language okay so what what we can see right you know the term uh, computer can can cannot understand you know whatever we say directly right so it requires a medium to communicate uh, with them correct so we use this kind of programming language you know to perform or you know to perform any particular task whatever we need it okay so that way you know we 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 are getting you know programming languages helps you know to achieve that right so yeah let's go in detail okay so what exactly we are going to so java is a programming language okay so as we already discussed actually you know which is going to help us to write some kind of commands code you know uh, to computer uh, to computer to perform a particular task okay and this is yeah one of the one of the famous programming languages okay you know uh, we used to instruct to the computer Okay, so we do have other alternatives as well, you know, to perform the similar kind of activities. Okay, so it's like an object-oriented programming language, and you know, it was developed earlier in earlier with in Sun Microsystems. Okay, so it first time it was released on 1995. Okay, and James Gosling initially developed this uh, Java and in um, sun microsystems okay so which is later has been taking over taken over by oracle corporation okay uh, java is set to features like uh, c and c plus plus okay so these c and c plus plus only you know we do have uh, different syntactical programming and you know object oriented concepts which were like you know uh, came from c and c plus plus only so uh, it obtain it has obtained formatting you know from C and oops features from C plus plus okay so okay so uh, so uh, as we already mentioned like you know to whatever that computer requires some understanding so we required an mediator and uh, we required Java as a mediator for now you know for our course okay so whatever we do. Uh, whatever we wanted to tell uh, the computer to execute some tasks we'll we'll do we'll do that you know through java programming okay and where java exactly used right you know java used in so many places okay and you know we we were creating like android apps okay android apps and also and we use what lot of desktop applications you know which are actually designed by java okay and uh, yeah and 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 also there are uh, there are also there are very very large and huge 
dependency on java runtime environment like you know billion devices are running on java right now okay so so java is everywhere okay so whatever you wanted to create if you want to create a desktop application if you want to create an application app mobile app on or you know uh, some kind of website e-commerce or anything okay that you can also do with you know you can you will be able to do it you know with java okay so we have advanced and you know we have core java you know which can take care of you know the requirements whatever we have it okay so yeah so now we 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 must you know like you know we must be wondering how to uh, write these commands and you know uh, if you write in English, like whether the computer can understand these or not, right? So how uh, the languages are helping us, you know, to make computers understand, you know, uh, the programming that we were trying to write in English. Okay, so it is going to it is going to have, you know, a couple of simple steps. Okay, so let's go and check it okay so initially for the first step what we need to do we we generally write uh, some programming commands okay uh, in the english language okay so uh, so this we call it as creating a java program okay and then once the program is converted in the second step okay so you completed the java program and once the program is completed so we will write uh, you know sorry we will uh, we will ask uh, java compiler to compile the code okay so which internally creates an intermediate version which we call it as byte code okay so the version is not readable by human but actually it, it can be readable by java interpreter okay which is going to be the next step so converting uh, the java simple java sorry converting the simple language uh, file right you know dot uh, java file to dot class file uh, which is the task which can be taken care by java compiler okay and the byte code after compiling the code you know uh, the outcome will be the byte code okay and the byte code is uh, readable only by the special software called a java interpreter okay so what java interpreter does okay now which translates the code the byte code into a machine machine understandable or machine friendly language code okay so what is that could be you know it is uh, zeros and ones okay so the computer reads the translated code and performs the task as requested so this is a background like you know how uh, the process will be you know in when you are writing a java program and it is going to how it is going to execute and you know how uh, the data uh, how the program will be uh, converted into byte code and then it converts into the interpreter one okay so which can be understandable by machine language right i'm sorry machine okay so that's how we yeah, that's how we know we we usually create a Java program and execute it, you know, on a computer. Okay, so we'll see like how to write program and all those things. Okay, we'll see. But you know, before that, uh, I strongly recommend like you know if you guys have some time, you know, to um, get this JDK. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. So time sometime actually you know get this JDK installed in your system okay and also if you if you can practice you know along with me okay so whatever the whatever the code which i'm trying to explain or whatever the examples which i'm trying to explain if you guys can practice you know with me uh, you know that would be helpful for you guys okay yeah so there are uh, like you know you can just download it from oracle okay and you know get it installed and java 17 or greater than it okay so whatever the version that you have you can you can utilize them okay but you know i have a java 17 version so like you know i am still continuing with that okay so if you guys have anything below 17 yeah please try to update it otherwise it's okay okay 
Okay, so there are like, you know, various editions of Java. Okay, so Java SC stands for standard edition and it's normally, uh, you know, one second. Yeah, and it is normally used, you know, uh, for developing desktop application from, you know, cores or base API. Okay, so from the core or base APIs. Okay, so this is, uh, we call it a standard edition. And we have Java E stands for enterprise edition. Okay, so for applications which run on the servers, for example, websites. Okay, and Java ME, which is like, you know, stands for micro edition for the application which run on resource constrained devices like small scale devices like cell phones and ex for example games okay so these things you know can be useful by micro edition okay uh, we, we used to create them okay and further every java edition consists of two elements one is jre and jdk right so the jre is java runtime environment Okay, and it is basically the virtual machine where you where your Java programs run on it. Okay, and it is also includes the browser plugin for applet execution. Okay, so Jar is kind of you know everybody knows it like right now. So it's a runtime environment. Okay, so wherever your uh, application or whatever you write it in you know, the code, so we have to execute in the on top of JRE, Java runtime environment only. Okay, so JDK is the development kit. So it's a fully featured software development kit, okay, of Java and you can utilize them uh, to write uh, the programs and you know, to compile the programs. And this kit will contain all JRE, J compiler and you know, uh, uh, Java debugger and Java doc as well, okay. So which help us, you know, to uh, write some documentation, okay. And it has the compilers and interpreters, everything included in this JDK development kit, okay. And yeah, so if you if you're not developing anything, and if you really want to execute only the developed Java programs in your system, you don't require to uh, use JDK, okay? So JRE will be sufficient, okay? And if you're planning to do some Java programming, then you will also need a JDK. So if you're a beginner, or if you simply want to learn Java, you can go ahead and download the JDK development kit uh, for Java SC edition and, you know, just simply download it and you know click on the install okay so which will be installing the java and uh, jdk kit okay for you guys okay so once that is done yeah we will be able to check you know java hyphen version from your command prompt and if you find that uh, java version globally then we're good otherwise you know we just need to add some kind of class path you know in your system variable so which will give you the java is available throughout your computer so entire your uh, yeah like you know whatever whatever the folders whatever the drives that you have it I actually you know you can execute any java program in any place okay so if you add that class variable sorry class path you know uh, settings you know for java so any any questions still now no harish Okay, yeah, thanks. So let me continue. Yeah, so as we already discussed, like, you know, uh, how to uh, write a program, right? You know, so uh, we do, we know that a computer program is uh, like kind of, you know, list of instructions that what we are expecting from computer to do it, right? So the same way, you know, we are going to write some simple, simple programs first and uh, those uh, in using Java and those things, you know, uh, will get it executed by computer. Okay, so so building a first program, right? You know, it's always like uh, the first program will be a uh, little difficult, but yeah, so I think you guys are already aware. So I don't require to 
just tell about you know all these things but you know i'm just covering it you know for uh, like a glance okay so so these are the main uh, symbols that we use when we write a program okay so one is curly brackets and curly curved brackets and also and square brackets and semicolon double quotes so these are the main symbols which play a lot of lot of action okay in the programming okay so let's start with the first program okay so you know it's kind of you know saying a hello world on you know printing on your screen right so you have to give the proper instructions to comp computer you know to make those things you know print on the screen right so but before starting that you know let's see uh, these are the these are the commonly used uh, you know special characters just try to remember them and that's great right you know you you know the names of special characters using a programming so we can write you know a simple java program right now you know using java correct you know So how to write a command prompt, okay? Command to print, uh, like, you know, kind of hello world, right? So as I mentioned, Java is kind of, you know, providing a JDK, the Java development kit, right? So there are like number of APIs which were already developed by Java. And, you know, they are all uh, like, you know, scattered in, in different type of packages. Okay. So based upon your requirement. So right now, what is your requirement? We were, we wanted to print something on the screen. Correct. So uh, when we wanted to print something on the screen. Okay. So uh, what we will do for the first time. So we have to know whether we have any APIs that are going to help us, you know, to print on the screen, right? So there is an API which always printing, you know, which is always having, you know, um, how to how to print and you know how to how to write the program. Uh, so all those things, right? You know, uh, the APIs is going to help you to complete that. Okay, so which we are talking right now is very specific to uh, one of the API, so which is like java.lang. Okay, and if you use system.out.print, okay, so this is the command that it is going to give you, and you know, sorry, that is, uh, this is a command which is going to give you a clear uh, output on your screen saying that hello world. Okay, so but how to write this, right? You know, we have to, uh, we you know, we heard that Java is a very syntactical approach, which we have it from C, and it also have the oops concept, which were there, right? So that means, you know, we cannot write simply system dot out dot print ln on the screen, you know, to print, you know, on the console, correct? So, so there is a way that we need to do it, okay? So, Okay, just a minute. Okay, so I'll show you. So as I mentioned, like, you know, we will be having uh, these things, okay? These are the special symbols. And as I mentioned in the earlier uh, slides, okay? So Java is very pretty much syntactical approach and you cannot, uh, you cannot write the program directly, you know, without having a proper structure because it follows the oops, okay? So, So I'm just logging into a replit, okay? So to just check on the Java examples, okay? Oh. 
Okay, just a minute, okay. Okay. Okay, so yeah, just forget about you know uh, the package, whatever we are talking about on the on the top. Okay, so I hope you guys are able to see my screen. Okay, so this is one of the demo class. Okay, yeah, we so, can. Yes, yeah, thank you. So this is like you know a demo class. Okay, so what we were doing initially, we were creating a class demo okay and uh, we were utilizing public static void min and you know it has some kind of parameters it is taking in okay so yeah just you know don't worry about all those things and we are going to cover everything on those um, you know for each and every keyword and so on also the oops concept and why we are writing in a class kind of thing you know we'll we'll come to know everything okay yeah so so writing system dot .println directly on a screen it is not going to work for java okay right now yeah they we were moving into functional programming but yes yeah so for now like you know it's still the java uses a pretty syntax like this okay uh, because we follow the oops concept okay so the class demo uh, is a class name and you know which contains a public static void method and it internally calls system dot order print ln, which is you know uh, printing something on the screen hello world java right so it looks very simple example okay and uh, it it has uh, like you know very uh, very long list of keywords okay so that we are going to discuss for each or uh, each and everything you know uh, in the coming upcoming classes but just now you know take it as granted and you know when you execute this okay yeah okay so when you execute this uh, using a command called java so what is that demo that's it click enter that's okay home dot demo yeah so if you see here hello world java right it printed on console so this is very simple and basic example okay that you can uh, write it on any of the system and just you know just do a java compile and java uh, just do a java you know uh, the class name and you will definitely see that hello world java was like you know executed and it displayed on the screen right so what is what is what are all these keywords and what are all we were using in this you know we are going to learn in future okay so so the replay right you know uh, the one which we are trying to use you know is it it's okay you know to if you want to get if you want if you want to use this replay you can also use it and otherwise you know it's simply like if you can download any of the ids okay on your system like eclipse intellij or any other things okay you know to just to practice uh, so you can get it install that and make make it available by tomorrow so that you know we can whatever we discuss actually we can just directly do some practice and then you know we can go with that okay mm -hmm. so yeah any questions yeah, no Harish, no question. Okay, okay. So I had some voice, so that's why I'm just asking. Yeah. So uh, whatever you you are comfortable. Okay. So if you're comfortable writing in Replit, yeah, you can just write it. And uh, if you are okay to write in, you know, uh, any of the IDs, yeah, 
just please go ahead and download them and make it ready enough for the course okay and this time you know for this from this class right you know from this batch actually i'm going to give more assignments you know to make sure you guys understand the topic okay uh, right so the same way you know today you know uh, as we just learned only one simple program okay so that uh, how to write a simple java program to execute and you know to show it on the screen correct so you guys can just after downloading it you also can try this you know very simple program and keep it like you know uh, okay so uh, i'll i'll share one uh, link okay so whatever you guys uh, do or uh, whatever you guys update like you know whatever the programs that you write you can also share it with me so that you know if you have any questions or if you have i i would have i i can also know that you know how much uh, how much like you know uh, the programs that you are writing so uh, so in what way if we can improve that or i know I'll, I'll provide my suggestions on it okay or else yeah it should be like you know pretty much kind of if you were able to practice them you know on time that should be okay for me and if it is like you know any kind of assignments if you can share it with me back okay so that i can review and you know i'll let you know you know if we can uh, do it in a better way or not okay so that way it goes okay for uh, examples and all and yeah so starting with this demo okay uh demo class whatever we just discussed if you want to write that you know it's okay to write but uh as it is very simple one so i'm okay to skip it okay so but you know for the next time like whatever the code uh whatever the topics we are discussing yeah try to practice them and you know uh i'll, I'll provide more assignments on them okay and let me go back you know to that ppt Okay, so we just written like you know a couple of commands you know to execute on uh, the command you know on the command prompt. Okay, so for that we just created a class and we just write some you know default method whatever we have it and you know we just added system dot with uh, you know uh, with the hello world right. So that's how we completed the first program of Java and you know let's move to the next topics right you know the first topic which comes into our mind is like variables okay so variables will play a key role you know in the computer programming okay so what exactly they do right you know it is kind of a container okay so which holds the data values in a program so what that mean right like you know if you are writing a program okay you know to perform some kind of task okay so sometimes you might require you know to uh, hold the data in some place right and you know later you can use that data you know wherever we want it correct so those kind of situations right you know uh, will uh, will you know for those to achieve those kind of situations okay uh, we do have a concept called variables okay so which is going to act as a container and which holds the data values in a program okay so what kind of you know data that we can store into these variables okay so to make uh, that data defined okay so we have internal java data types so these data types are going to help us you know to create a one type of uh, variable like if you are going with int okay so if you are going to with int and if you create an int variable okay so that type is going to help us you know to identify which which data is belongs to which data type okay so these data types are divided into two things one is primitive data types and the other one is okay non primitive data types the primitive data types uh, which actually include you know the basic um, yeah not only the basic okay so it actually includes most of them okay data types you know uh, for uh, writing the programs right so
okay so the primitive data types is like including boolean character byte short int long float and double right and non primitive data types we were talking about uh, classes and we were talking about interfaces and arrays right so these things we call it as non primitive data types and string which also comes under the non primitive data type okay so which is not like primitive data type okay so array string whatever we are going to you know learn in future yeah that will be you know a kind of a non primitive data types okay so this is a little bit introduction about the variables and primitive data types and you know non primitive data types so let's see uh, uh, examples okay about uh, this one how the variables and data types and non primitive data types yeah so for that you know we don't require to do sorry for that you know we don't require non primitive data types right now because we are already we might be using them okay so so let me go back to the replit one second okay so this is very simple basic example for the you know to make sure you guys understand uh, about the variables okay so what i've done i just created a class called variable example okay and public static void min okay and i'll tell you what exactly these things okay so in future you'll be going to run learn about methods and all constructors so definitely you know i'll make sure that this get covered okay so in the methods like what is public static void main and why we need to write in that way yeah so yeah remember everything like you know java is like kind of very syntactical approach so that's why you know we have very specific things okay and yeah so when you write a program so as i mentioned if you wanted to store something or if you wanted to hold uh, some value into a container yeah that can be possible only using variables okay so what type of variables that we can create you know that depends on your data types okay so the data types first one is byte b is equals to 120 okay so if you give uh, more than like 128 or 129 the program is going to fail because you know there is a site limit size limit sorry size limit for the byte data type okay so we have to be very specific and it should be fall under the limit okay so the same way short integer long are going to be taking care of the number types only and we have float double which is going to talk about the precisions and uh, so it is going to like uh, have the similar kind of approach okay uh, like how to create sorry in the float and uh, double right you know it's 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 having a little bit difference okay and uh, you know but both will uh, hold the you know yeah precision values okay so like floating values okay 20.2222 something like that and you know 21222 okay some you know for double so it's almost like same so it it works on those uh images and yeah so yeah for double right you know it is kind of um uh, like 64 bits it is going to um uh, uh occupy and for float actually it is for 32 bits okay so that's where you know you can identify whether it's a float value or or you know a double value using uh you know when we have the float value we generally close that float value with ending f okay and for double yeah it's nothing like you know you can still continue and there is one more uh data type which we call it as character c is equals to a so character means like you know car data type okay so we just can hold only one character in that container okay 
So C is equals to A. In the other one, we have Boolean. So which will be talking about uh, the true or false conditions. Okay. So one is uh, Boolean who is equals to false. Okay. That means, you know, we have uh, uh, the default value as false right now. And you can also make it as true. Okay. So let's try to run this program. And I'm, I'm just printing all those values into, um, you know, the console using system.autoprintrun statement again, right? One second. Okay, so it just executed properly and Java. Java. Variable example. Okay. So this is what it is going to print for you. Okay. And if I show something like this, right? And 129. And this is 9. Yeah, integer and long is having very large number of support. So I'm just, you know, showing some example only on the byte and short right now. And we can also do the similar kind of failures that we can do it, you know, for uh, application as well. Okay. So if you see here, what it is saying, possible lossy conversion from int to byte. Okay. And possible lossy conversion from int to short. That means, so when you have, uh, you know, uh, out of that boundary actually, okay. So it is saying that uh, I cannot convert that into byte, okay, because it is out of my limit, okay. And the 32769 is also out of limit for short. So that's why, you know, short is also giving you an example saying that incompatible types, possible lossy conversion, from in to short, right? So that's why, you know, it has to be very specific, you know, when we consider the sizes, okay, all the time. And yeah, so these, uh, these are the boundaries for the variables, okay? Or uh, these are the boundaries for the data types that, you know, which can perform uh, like, you know, uh, the storage for you guys like you know for the containers it it, it generally access containers right you know all these variables so and also the for those variables whatever the data types which we are using we have to be careful like you know while we are assigning the values to it okay so depending on our requirement we are going to utilize all these data types and uh, yeah so So for this slide, you know, uh, you guys can take one assignment, okay? So just write a couple of programs, okay? Uh, based upon based upon different data types, okay? So just try to uh, just try to write a couple of programs, okay? Uh, uh, like the similar kind of thing. Uh, using you know, uh, using only the long and float, okay? Uh, you can just write a uh, couple program, you know, how to utilize long variable and, you know, how to utilize float variables, what kind of data that we are storing in float and what kind of, how it is getting restricted, like, you know, till what point, you know, the float is supported and why do we have double? Okay, so explore these options, okay. Uh, even though we do have float, why we got double, right? So, you know, that question you might get it okay so if you try and understand using a program okay you'll be able to understand easily so if you still have some problem to understand about float and double difference and you know any other data type uh, kind of issues let me know i'll actually I'll, I'll i'll tell you in the class itself okay so just practice Practice on variable and data type combination examples. Okay, this is the first one. Okay, and the second one 
you know uh, second one is like you know try to show uh, the comparison between float and double float and double Yeah, float and double with a simple Java program, okay? Okay, so just try to do these things, okay? So at least you'll learn those, uh, you know, uh, kind of different type, what, what was the different data types doing on our, right, you know, uh, on our data, sorry on our daily basis actually how these things are going to help us you know to write some programs correct so we need to understand very specific thing about all these data types and where to use when to use so that's why you know i'm just asking like try to find the comparison comparisons between you know uh the float and double in a programmatical way and if you see here we have these many integer types right by short in long so for all these things i'm just telling like you know uh, they do have a different approach okay for all these by short in long okay and they have like you know very big uh, list of support numbers okay so if you wanted to like you know utilize uh, integer short byte okay you can have uh, you know just a big limit right you know for integer it is also having a big limit and uh, the size uh, you know yeah i did not exactly remember what kind of uh, number that it can store you know entirely yeah but yeah so try to understand those differences where to use what and uh, um, you know the byte short int long as well okay so yeah, most probably we will be using int and short. Okay, so in such cases, if you wanted to go with a very big number, like you know, when you are creating a trace ID, you know, uh, for you know, for calling something, or when you're creating some random numbers, you know, to uh, generate some passwords, correct? So those kind of time, like you know, we use uh, you know long or integer, you know, to make sure. Uh, that that gives a very strong number to use you know for that login right so these things will help us right you know to understand how the variables and data types are going to work okay so just practice them uh, like you know with that example and uh, you know i'll continue with the next one one second yeah so we do have conditional statements Okay, so what is this conditional statement, right? You know, uh, so we, we generally do these kind of conditional statements every day, okay? So like, you know, uh, when it comes to the programming side, it is like if decision-making statements are if statements, switch statement, and there are other loop statements as well. We are going to discuss further, but you know, just concentrate only on the decision-making statements right now. So if statements, so what is this if statements, right? You know, generally we do have a lot, um, lot of options, right, you know, okay. So you guys might aware, like, you know, when we are going for a loan or something, okay. So they generally, uh, the bank is going to decide up on your name, right? You know, whether I need to give a loan for them or not, correct? So, what they do, they generally, you know, pull some kind of credit score, correct? You know, the credit score, which give you, which gives the complete information about you, like, uh, you know, how your payments were there, like last. So how your payments were uh, done on, you know, uh, on the 
previous loans or credit cards you know that it which actually tells about the credit score right so the bank is completely depend on that credit score you know to uh, give you a loan right so so for this right you know we do have certain people which are having very high credit score and there are people which we have very low credit score and you know, they're like medium people like which are maintaining a balanced credit score you know to get something right so so when we when we wanted to disburse the loan we we have to check these things and depending on the you know uh, credit scores we decide upon the interest rates correct so what it does like you know when we have uh, 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 above 800 score okay on credit right you know we are going to give you uh like some kind of loan okay uh loan which is having like around 10 10.25 or 11.25 interest rate you know such kind of way correct so so these are the different type of conditions and these are the different type of decisions that we can make depending on the credit score right so this okay so to support these kind of uh, you know programming we do have this conditional statements okay like if statements okay so if the credit score is this much you know and your loan interest will be this and if it is not equals to this one and if it is you know equals to something this you have this this much of credit score and you know you will be getting this much you know interest rate so based upon the conditions and based upon you know uh, uh, the other factors so we will decide upon how to give interest how to perform those things and you know we'll we'll decide upon those things right so the conditional statements are helping us to make some decisions okay so decisions based upon the data what we have what we have available you know uh, on the person right so similarly this if statements are going to utilize you know give you uh, that kind of facility you know to make decisions based upon uh, some kind of conditions okay so if statements let us go and check if statements okay uh, like what exactly this is going to be right so decision making you know simple so in our life like we actually make like a lot of decisions you know and number of decisions okay every day okay so similarly you know we have chosen the path you know to come to pick it up maths and you know uh, to come as a computer programmer that is also one of the decisions that we took and same like you know uh, so there are a lot of other decisions that we take it every day in in our day to day life right so in java also we have a, this kind of situation to make the decisions okay so generally you know at the end of the day actually you know for all the decisions will come on sit on only two options like whether you have to go with this or you, have, you don't want to go with this right yes or no right so Yeah, so the same way. So if it is yes, if you want to perform some task, if it is no, if you want to perform some task, okay, so that you can do it on your own. But you know, Java has to understand, right? You know, so for which uh, thing that, you know, we make it understandable, okay? So we have, um, we have if statements, like conditional statements that we were discussing right now. So which can help us, you know, to write these kind of conditions okay so how we we write it okay yeah this is the sample okay uh, syntax you know when we write for an if condition a simple if condition okay so the first one is if condition and in the condition if the condition is successful like that means true okay so then it executes the first block which we call it as if block and if the condition fails to execute okay and it is negative like false so then the else condition is going to be executed okay so this is pretty much simple okay so if condition the condition is true and the else one is the condition is false that's cool right so 
so we'll just check one example on it and we'll go for the next one okay you know in the next class okay just a minute yeah this is our if condition so what i've done okay so whatever the classes that you're seeing extra you can just ignore now okay uh, which we are going to discuss later okay but the main part is this one correct so the if condition so what we are trying to do right if number percentage two is equals to is equals to zero right then we were saying it is even number 